okay so reversible and irreversible process why it is important and uh, you know how do we use it uh, in in calculations that we'll see uh, just let me ask you one uh, small questions here you must have done one or uh, in the school also you must have done this the expression of work done in isothermal reversible uh, expansion w is equals to minus 2.303 nrt log v2 by v1 isn't it have you done this yes or no just you tell me yes have you done this right how do we derive it if you just little bit if you go back and try to recall the derivation of this formula we started with this formula right minus p external dv dw is this and then we integrated yes p2 by p1 p1 by p2 or v2 by v1 both you can write prakut that's not a problem because isothermal no so p1 v1 is equals to p2 v2 so p1 by p2 is equals to v2 by v1 so in terms of pressure if you want to write it is log of p1 by p2 here in terms of in terms of volume it is v2 by v1 so both are correct yes so i'm not going to discuss the derivation part again we'll do that also a bit later not now just a second not for a reaction this formula have you seen yes you have seen most of you have seen right how do we derive this formula from this expression only we derive this yes do you remember this if you remember we write work done as minus p external into dv and then what we do we just substitute this p external as nrt by v dv and then we integrate it right Minus n R T outside d V by V will integrate it and will get the expression. This is what the, this is the derivation of this uh, work done expression we have in reversible process. In reversible process, correct. So the thing is, why this P external you it, you did not take out? We have just taken this P external inside the integral sign. If it is irreversible process, don't write this. Okay, irreversible process. And d w integration is equals to minus p external d v. This we write. In case of irreversible process, p external will take outside the integral sign, and hence the formula would be p external into delta d. This is the formula we have for irreversible process. So point I'm trying to make that if it is reversible process, p external is inside the integral sign. if it is irreversible process p external is outside the integral sign which means this p external is constant here this p external in case of reversible process is not constant then only we can do this yes or no correct if p external is constant we can take out of the integral sign if it is not constant we cannot take out so what we concluded from this that to understand this derivation correct why we haven't you know taken this p external outside the integral sign and why here i have taken this p external outside the integral sign to understand this two you need to understand this two process first reversible irreversible process if you do not understand this then again you will memorize the entire thing and you will forget also after some time okay so this discussion will do the derivation part will do later first of all we understand reversible and irreversible process so let's do this okay i am taking a piston cylinder system Okay, I'm taking a piston 
cylinder system and we have two different states of the piston we have here this is a piston and the piston is movable okay it is not fixed it is movable so we have the same piston cylinder system but two different states of the piston we have suppose this is the state a piston is at state a and the piston is at state b after some time okay here we have some gaseous molecules present piston cylinder system movable piston we have this pressure is the p external external pressure and this side because of the gaseous molecule we have this as pressure of gas internal pressure okay now if you want to go from state a to state b what you need to do you need to increase the external pressure right you need to increase the external pressure yes correct so how do we increase the external pressure two way we can do this first way we are discussing here i'll place some mass on this piston suppose a small small stone i have put it on the piston so obviously when you put the mass over here it will exert its own pressure because of its mass and the piston slowly will come down and maintain the equilibrium again correct because when this piston comes down the volume decreases volume decreases means the pressure of gas increases and once this pg increases after some time it will become equal to the total external pressure and then the piston becomes static is it clear correct tell me right i said what i want to go from state a to state b so for this what you need to do you need to increase the external pressure so i am increasing the external pressure slowly right i have put one small stone over here so because of this mass of the stone this piston will come down correct and once it comes down volume decreases compression takes place so gas the volume of gas decreases so pressure of gas will increase because pressure volume inversely proportional so it means once you put this stone over here the piston will come down and gradually this p gas is increasing so after some time this p gas becomes equals to the external pressure pressure of this stone plus the external pressure that we have and then the piston becomes static it won't move down further correct yes understood guys okay so this is one step again since you have to achieve this particular point b so for that again you will increase the pressure slowly we are increasing the pressure one two again piston will go down same thing will repeat third stone again it will go down further fourth stone it will go down further and after this suppose we have this state b which is this we have correct so what happens in this compression takes place but slowly step by step isn't it slowly step by step one stone you put down slowly it will go down 
again the second one further it will go down third one it will go down fourth well it will go down and finally it attains the state p till here it is fine did you understand this if you did not understand it you can let me know i will explain it again because if you don't get it you will ask me doubt again and again after some time that's why i want to or i want you to understand it properly if you understand you can reply i will move on then quickly tell me guys clear ठीक है this is one way so in this process what happens it is the process the entire process is extremely slow you are increasing the pressure marginally and step in in step wise manner slowly you are increasing the pressure and finally you let ends the state b over here this is one way another way is what suppose this is 1 kg 1 kg 1 kg 1 kg 4 kg you have put on it in four steps right in four steps you have put for 4 kg of mass on this another way is what you just take a 4 kg block and place it on the stone like this on the piston like this 4 kg block in this case what happens this piston all of a sudden it comes down and attains this equilibrium state yes or no this is the state we have so this is the two different way we have by which we can achieve state b from state a isn't it clear so this is what the reversible and irreversible process the one that we discussed before right the first process where we have put 1 kg 1 kg 1 kg 1 kg stone on it that process is extremely slow a step wise process okay this process is reversible process right irreversible process is very fast process you put the 4 kg stone all of a sudden the piston will go down and attains the equilibrium state that is irreversible process so did you get the basic difference did you get understand the basic difference between reversible and irreversible process reversible process is is extremely slow obviously we can revert this without the help of any external agency remove this four stone piston will come back to its original state from a state b to state a on its own right so it is reversible process we can go back to the original state easily in reversible in irreversible we cannot do that hence the name is irreversible also we cannot revert the process because the process is very fast right and because of fast movement of piston there will be some energy that you know dissipates into the atmosphere in the form of heat because the fast movement will you know yeah one second shraddha the fast movement because of fast movement there is some energy that goes out into the atmosphere because of the friction because of the heat right because of the collision of molecules there if it moves down fast the molecules will collide faster and some energy will go into the atmosphere will dissipate into the atmosphere so since the energy has gone out so we cannot restore the original position that's why it is said to be irreversible so bottom line is what i'll give you the you know the property of the true process the bottom line is what the reversible process is extremely slow this process is extremely slow very slow process and irreversible process is fast process because of fast only we cannot regain or you know go back to the original state that we had it is irreversible we cannot revert it back if you want to revert you have to do some work on it without work 
you cannot get the original position which was there initially. Is it clear till here? All of you understood the difference between the two. We have so many properties of these two process. We'll, I'll give you all those properties. But first thing is this fast and slow, you must understand. Second thing you see, that is what external pressure. In reversible process, what happens? We are putting down this stone like in every step, right? So in every step, what we are doing, we are increasing the external pressure. Yes or no? You can type in CLR. We can, we are increasing the external pressure in every step in reversible process. Yes or no? Correct. Because we are adding stones. So we are increasing the external pressure in each step. Correct guys. So that's why we say what? that in reversible process, P external is not constant. P external is not constant in reversible process. Did you get it? Very important. Any doubt in this? P external is not constant. Tell me. Quickly. Is it clear? Right? P external is not constant because we are adding stones of a definite mass in each step. So gradually we are increasing the external pressure. So P external is not constant here. What happens in irreversible? In irreversible process, what happens? Instead of four one kg block, I put a four kg block on this piston, right? And suddenly the piston will come down and will attain this state P. So this process is what it compression takes place because of this pressure that we apply on it. And we are not increasing the pressure here in every step. Once we put the four kg stone, piston will come down because of the external pressure that we have increased. And that pressure is constant throughout the process from A to B, isn't it? So P external is constant for irreversible process. Now you tell me this point is very important. If you understood it, all other points you can memorize, but this you need to understand in irreversible process. Is it clear? Right? So this block, the green one, this block is for irreversible process. And this one, the four small blocks that you see, it is for reversible process. So this you must understand and must remember P external is not constant for reversible process, but it is constant for irreversible process. That's why when we calculate the work done in reversible process, we don't take P external out of the integral sign since it is not constant. Understood now? But irreversible P external is constant. So we can take out the P external from the integral sign and we can simply write P external into delta V. That's why the derivation we have to this. Any doubt in this? No? Okay. Now, few properties of reversible and irreversible process you write down. Heading you write down here, reversible process. This difference also they ask in a school exam. Okay, the difference between reversible and irreversible process. First point, this is difference only. The first point you write down, it is bidirectional in nature. Bidirectional means we can revert. We can gain the original position without any external work. So bidirectional means process can be reversed
process can be reversed along the same path easily first property is this no external work is required is required to restore the system to its original position system to its original position original position so slowly we are adding the stone see prakul we are not talking about a you know a reaction over here it is a process correct it is a process and that will happen lee chatelier principle generally we apply in a reversible reaction okay there will be see there will be tendency of you know opposing the change that is happening but it is not possible there since we are increasing the external pressure by putting the stone there on the piston right obviously piston wants to gain its its original position right but that will happen only once you remove the stone that you are putting in but since you are doing that compression process so tendency will be there but the process goes like this if you do not remove the stone from the piston that's what i have written here you see no external work is required to restore the system to its original position it means tendency is there in the system tendency is there to regain its position but that is not happening since the stone is there external pressure is there extra external pressure is there you remove that pressure extra pressure it will gain its own position so yes tendency will be there but it won't you know stop the process that is happening over there got it so bidirectional no external work is required okay there are infinite number of steps okay infinite number of steps for example i have taken four stones but actually in reversible process like i said it is extremely slow we increase the pressure by delta p delta increase will be there like pressure is suppose 5 atmosphere so will increase by 5 point will increase by 0.0001 and then the piston will come down so like like that we have infinite number of steps infinite number of steps each step is in equilibrium each step is in equilibrium okay the ideal gas law that is pv is equals to nrt is applicable at each step applicable at each step it is imaginary process practically this doesn't happen it is imaginary process hypothetical one because whenever there is motion some amount of heat must go out in the form some amount of energies energy must go out in the form of heat right heat energy but that is we are ignoring so that's why it is an ideal process imaginary process it does not happen on practical basis right extremely slow already written the process is extremely slow right and the most important property which we use in derivation of work done also that is p external is not 
constant. Any doubt, let me know. No, it's like it is not possible. It's not. It's not like it is only for gases. But we are discussing this in with respect to gas only. Obviously, this relation is applied for gases. So we are discussing with respect to gas. Right. And in the chapter also, you will be dealing with gases only. That's why we have this point. If gases are not there, obviously PV is equals to NRT, we cannot apply. Done? All of you copied? Solids and liquids also, we, we won't have that. We have only gaseous state in, 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 in the slavers, mostly. Right. Solids and liquids, we can talk about. The change in volume is not that great over there. Okay, so solids and liquids, we don't apply all this. But yes, if you ask me, it is possible or not, for solids and liquids also, it is possible. Okay, this is the property for reversible process. Next, write down irreversible. Reversible was bidirectional, so irreversible is unidirectional. This is the actual one, unidirection, okay? Means what? Process cannot be reversed along the same path easily. Process cannot be reversed along the same path easily okay along the same path easily it's not like we cannot reverse but if you want to reverse you have to do some work okay the energy that has gone out in the form of heat that amount of energy you need to provide because when the piston is at state A, it must have some energy at this state. If that energy won't be there, it won't gain the same state again. So the energy that has gone out because in the form of heat, that amount of work energy you need to provide or work you need to do, then only it will gain its original position, right? So it's not like we cannot you know, gain the original position. It's not, it's not like the original position we cannot store. But to store that, we need extra work. External work is required for that. That kind of work is not required in reversible. You just need to remove the change that you have done. System will gain its own position in reversible process. Right? So right on the next point, work has to be done. Has to be done. By surroundings on the system by surroundings simply i'll write down work has to be done by surroundings to reuse to restore the original position position of the system Okay. In this, we have finite number of steps. 10, 8, 5, 10, like that. You can count them. Finite number of steps.
it is a fast process real process the previous one was imaginary but this one is real real p external is constant constant external pressure right pv is equals to nrt pv is equals to nrt applicable only at initial and final step initial and final step pv is equals to nrt applicable copy this down we don't have intermediate steps in irreversible prachita see uh, i i i knew this that's why i was uh, you know asking that time continuously anyways not a problem i'll explain this first of all all of you have copied this down yeah see what happens in irreversible process i'll just draw the rough diagram here we have this piston right so on this piston we are increasing the external uh, pressure all of a sudden slowly we are not increasing just you put some stone over here all of a sudden the piston will come down and compression happens when the pressure becomes equal then the piston stops right so it's like the moment you put in this stone or brick or whatever the mass we have here here so this will have some external pressure you have increased the external pressure suppose the total external pressure is this p ext now because of this pressure the compression is taking place right the piston will go down okay so from this point to this point the pressure is this only because not neither we are adding anything on the piston nor we are removing anything so we have only two step here like only one step initial step final step and in between these two the piston is coming down piston does not stop anywhere in between it was there initially at state a you put in the stone it starts coming down fast right fast it come down and then state against the state b so this compression takes place against the constant external pressure which is this pressure yes initial means here you can apply pv pv is equals to nrt here you can apply pv is equals to nrt we do not have any intermediate step so pv is equals to nrt is not applicable there yeah not a problem so i hope all of you understood this concept right reversible and irreversible process okay now if you try to understand the graph over here of both processes reversible and irreversible i am taking the case of expansion here compression also possible right reversible irreversible process we have now with this process we can have expansion as well as compression both possibilities are there so i am taking here the no reversible expansion and irreversible expansion so this is pressure volume graph we have pressure volume graph we have correct 
I am considering expansion. It is the case of expansion. Both graph is for expansion. One is for reversible, other one is for irreversible. So expansion volume increases. Suppose the initial pressure is this. Suppose the initial pressure is this PI, correct? Now, when you decrease the pressure a bit slowly, slightly you decrease the pressure, what happens? This pressure will come down, right? And like you, when it comes down during this process, the expansion takes place a bit, isn't it? One second, I'll draw it properly. So just to make you understand, I'm just drawing it a bit more. Suppose the pressure you have decreased from this to this point. So here to here it comes. So from this point to this point, we'll have expansion also like this. Okay. Further we have at this point, correct? Now we are at here at this point. Further you decrease pressure, you see. Further you decrease pressure a bit and you decrease pressure. In this course, we again have expansion. have expansion like this. So this is the expansion we have. Step two is this. Further you decrease the pressure because it is uh, expansion. So we need to decrease the pressure. Further you decrease pressure. So we have again expansion like this. And it continues like this. Okay, it continues like this. So this is the steps we have. Step one, step two, step three like this we have infinite number of steps because i have just you know drawn here to make you understand but the difference in pressure no it's very less 0 0.001 pressure you are decreasing so slowly the piston is like the slowly the expansion is taking place okay you won't even observe okay that, that, that the piston is going up expansion is taking place but slowly it is happening right so since we are decreasing the pressure, stepwise we are going. So this graph is for what? Is for a reversible process. It is reversible expansion graph here. Any doubt in this? No doubt. What happens? Is it tough? Is it tough? How many of you are understanding it? Tough, easy or moderate? Moderate. Okay. Okay. Fine. So we are just see, it's very simple. It's very basic and very simple. Expansion we are considering. So expansion will happen once you decrease the external pressure, correct? So we are decreasing the external pressure. Now we can decrease external pressure in two different way. Ek to ye ho gaya ki slowly we are decreasing. decrease slowly we are decreasing. Another way is what? You have external pressure here, PI, and what you did, all of a sudden you remove the, you know, the mass which is there on the piston. All of a sudden you remove the entire mass. So this pressure will suddenly will go down and reach to a final pressure over here. All of a sudden, very fast process. Once this happens, since the pressure is decreasing, so we'll have expansion accordingly, right? Like this. We'll have expansion according to this pressure. So this process is what? This is from here to here, the pressure will go down and this pressure, this is the expansion takes place, correct? So final volume is this, we have here VF and expansion is this, this expansion takes place against PF, the external pressure. This happens all of a sudden, right? First step is this one and two initial and final step. This is irreversible expansion.
irreversible expansion. Got it? Irreversible expansion. So irreversible expansion, how it happens? You have decreased the pressure from PI to PF. And against PF, this is the external pressure we have. Against PF, the expansion is taking place. That's why if you find out work done in irreversible process, it will be minus P external into DV yoga. Because P external is constant. You have to take this out of the integral side. But if it is for irreversible, then work done, sorry, reversible in reversible process would be minus of P external. P external, you have to write down into the, under this integral sign into D. This P you cannot take out because gradually the pressure is either increasing or decreasing. It depends whether it is expansion or contraction, correct? So, but P is gradually changing P external. That's why this is the variable we cannot take out of the integral sign here. Is it clear? So when we derive the expression for work done in reversible process, we'll take this inside and here we'll take it outside. Work done, we'll discuss Prakul, just a second. That is a convention basically we have. Work done, we'll discuss uh, separately. Let me finish this first. It's basically a convention. What is a work done expression in physics? What do you take? PDV, right? No, no. Pressure volume work done. What do you take? PDV, right? Yeah, correct. Is this in convention? I'll tell you. First, let me finish this. So did you understand the graph and in the entire thing, reversible, irreversible process, all of you? It's clear? Right? So I think we have discussed all the, you know, theory, basic, basic things we have discussed in reversible, irreversible process. I have done this for expansion. It is expansion, right? Contraction also opposite you can go if it is there, right? And the point that I have given you property, you must remember. Okay, can we move on? No doubt in this, can we move on? Okay, fine. Hope you understood. Take care. So next is uh, we have thermodynamic quantity. Thermodynamic quantity. The first thermodynamic quantity we are going to discuss is work. Represented by W. Then we'll discuss heat, that is Q. Then we'll discuss internal energy, that is U. And then we'll see the first law of thermodynamics. After that only you will get some numericals on first law of thermodynamics, okay? So work is what? Right. Definition you all know. And here we are talking about PV work generally. So we have here IUPAC convention. Okay, this you have to memorize. IUPAC convention. And what is the convention? Work done by the system. If system is doing work, so system energy is decreasing. So work done by the system is always negative. Suppose you are calculating work, you have got some question and work done you are calculating. If you get negative answer, it means it is work done by the system. That is what the meaning we have. So work done by the system is negative. It is convention. You have to memorize it. Okay. And whenever the system does work, it is the case of expansion because system is doing work, right? So expansion takes place. If you have work done on the system, work done on the system, then it is positive. 
and on the system means surrounding is doing work on the system that will be the case of compression or contraction how do we define work done work done dw we always define as minus p external into dv minus p external into dv or if you are we'll use this expression only i'll just write down first this it is p of gas into dv this is the work done we have over here pressure of gas if you look at this piston cylinder system pressure of gas is this from inside it is happening right and external pressure is this ext external so if this pressure is positive it means this pressure is negative just a sign convention p external is positive p gas is positive so p external is negative correct what happens in physics you take you take p external into dv always in physics the formula is dw is equals to p external into dv here we have p external but in chemistry we take the pressure because of the gas because system is gas over here so pressure of gas we are taking so p gas into dv so p gas is equals to negative of p external that's why the work done expression we have here is minus p external into dv understood yes or no so in physics we'll take pressure of the external pressure we are taking in physics but in chemistry we are taking the pressure of gas that's why it is minus p external into dv because p gas equals to negative of p external and we integrate it from initial volume vi to final volume vf this is the expression for work done for all processes means for entire process if you do the derivation of work done will start from this only this is the basic of the work done formula is this only from here we can put some condition whatever condition is there based on different different processes and we can find out the expression of work done it's clear Tell me, any doubt? yes clear if you talk about the unit of work done what is the unit here we have pdv so what is the unit of pressure atm joule is fine joule is also fine but whenever you calculate work done with this formula p delta v the unit you will get in atm liter because pressure is atm volume is liter this is the unit of work done here so you can have this unit atm liter you can have joule also you can have calorie right all these unit you may have but whenever you calculate p delta v so pressure will always be in either in bar or in atm volume will be in liter so your unit would be atm liter so you should know the conversion of atm liter into joule because if you find out delta w in atm liter then heat will be given in joule heat they won't q value they won't give in atm liter so you need to take the same unit everywhere so this conversion is very important and must memorize 1 atm liter 
one ATM liter is equals to one zero one point three two five joule. Okay. If you want to take some approximation, you can take hundred, but mostly we'll take the entire value like this only one zero one point three two five joule. If you forget this particular value, then what you will do? I'll give you one alternate way for this. You know the value of R gas constant. What is the value of R gas constant in ATM liter? Zero point zero eight two one. Correct. So R value is zero point zero eight two one ATM liter per mole Kelvin. This is the value we have. And in joule, the value is what? Eight point three one four joule per mole Kelvin. Yes. So from this relation, what we can write? We can write zero point zero eight two one atm liter is equals to how much joule? Could you tell me? Zero point zero eight two one is equals to how much joule? What? 8.314. Yes, because mole can will mole Kelvin will get cancelled. So 0.0821 is equals to 8.314 joule. So one atm liter is equals to 8.314 divided by 0.0821 joule, which is same only. But since R value, you usually must remember. You know R value. So from there only you can. There also you can find out this relation of atm liter and joule. Okay, so if you remember this, fine. Otherwise, with the value of R, you can find out the relation. Okay, so formula of work done is what? Formula of work done is this. You have to keep this in mind. P external dV. This is the formula we have. V one to V two you can write, or V I to V F you can write whatever. But the formula is this only. In just a second, I'll go back. Okay, done all of you. Yeah. So this is the value. Sorry, formula of work done. Now we'll apply the condition in this. Like I said in the beginning, different different condition will apply to understand the uh, you know concept here. What what conditions given in the question based on the conditions? What can, could be the expression like that? Suppose here what happens if if closed Rigid container is there. What do you mean by rigid container? Means the boundary is fixed. We cannot change the boundary. Boundary is rigid. 
movable boundary is not there right so in this case what we can write change in volume equals to zero and when change in volume is zero what is work done work done is also zero this is the one condition we have here correct now the second one is if external pressure is zero p external is zero then also work done is zero external pressure is zero usually in case of free expansion free expansion free actually expansion also we have of two types one is intermediate expansion other one is free expansion intermediate expansion is the expansion which takes place under the under some external pressure right free expansion is like expansion in vacuum there is no pressure outside right so free expansion we have expansion in vacuum p external is zero work done is zero in vacuum okay if you have reversible process have written it already if reversible rp reversible process is there then p external is not constant right p external is not constant hence work done w is equals to minus p external dv within the integral sign if you have irreversible process fourth one if we have ip irreversible process then dw sorry work done p external is constant is constant so we can write work done is equals to minus p external dv or simply we can write minus p external dv ka integration is delta v work done so for irreversible process we always have p delta v this is the expression we have okay fifth one if you have cyclic process cyclic process cyclic process if you have then it could be clockwise or anti clockwise both way it's possible right if the process is clockwise this is very important cyclic process if it is clockwise then it means work done by the system clockwise means work done by the system by the system so this would be negative okay if it is anti clockwise anti clockwise then we have work done on the system it is positive this information is very important because if you have pressure volume graph is given then magnitude of work then you can find out by finding out the area of the curve right but whether it is positive or negative that 
you can have from this uh, you know information like for example you see if you have a graph like this we have pressure we have volume okay this is 2 4 6 8 and this is 10 liter okay this is 1 2 3 4 4 atm process starts from here a it goes to b then it goes to c goes to d and then again goes back to a you need to find out the work done in this process your answer would be what you will find out the area so the magnitude of work done w if i find out magnitude of work done is area under the curve under the curve or graph so magnitude we can find out from this length into breadth so we have 8 into this distance is 3 so it is 24 atm liter in joule it would be 24 into 101.325 joule right so this is the magnitude we have correct but whether it is negative work done or positive work done how do we know that so if you calculate this step wise like work done see total work done would be what total work done would be w of a to b plus w of b to c plus w of c to d plus w of d to a this is the total work done we have so step wise you can calculate if i tell you here see pab is the expansion against the constant pressure so work done ab is 4 into 10 minus 2 like this we can calculate for others see b to c is constant volume correct so b to c is 0 d to a is also constant volume 0 c to d work done is c to d external pressure is 1 minus minus p external no external pressure is 1 into the change in volume is 2 minus 10 like this you can find out the value you will get the exact value with sign okay 10 minus 2 8 into 4 minus 32 plus 8 so you see with sign we are getting minus 24 atm liter correct so if you do like this if you do the calculation you will get the answer with sign you don't have to worry about anything because you'll get the sign sign means work done by the system but if you know if you have this information you see if it is clockwise work done by the system anti clockwise work done on the system so first of all what you will do okay it is a clockwise process we have so work done must be negative this idea you have now if the options are given in positive all those positive options you can eliminate simply you can eliminate because the answer must be negative right how do we find out magnitude we'll find out the area so area gives you the magnitude but since it is clockwise process so the answer for work done would be minus 24 into 101.325 joule this is the answer tell me any doubt in this
clear understood respond guys no doubt yeah so simply you find out area of the graph if it is clockwise put a negative sign if it is anti clockwise it is worked on the system positive and that is your answer fine so this is it for for today's session okay we have done with work okay next thermodynamic quantity is heat obviously we need to see the graph over here okay and then we'll see heat okay so we'll continue with heat in the next class okay and then you can solve some questions i'll share one dpp okay i have uploaded on class pro also uh the date of submission is 24th of november you can solve the dpp and then you can upload on class pro yes b2c is zero because volume is constant there is no change in volume okay guys thank you take care bye